Hey everybody, welcome to my second installment of my October Spooktober series. That's right, all this month I'll be putting out videos based on horror movies and books. My last video was The Exorcist, and this video I'll be talking about the 1982 movie The Thing, directed by John Carpenter. A lot of people don't realize that that movie is based on a novella called Who Goes There? It was published in 1938 and was written by John W. Campbell. I just read the novella. It's a thin little guy, only a hundred pages. And then I watched the John Carpenter movie, The Thing. In this video, I'll compare the two, see how they're alike, how they're different. And at the end of this video, I'll tell you which one I think is better. This video will contain spoilers about both the novella and the movie. So here's your warning. This video will also contain disturbing images from the movie. I don't normally give that warning, but I uh, felt the need to do that in this one. So if the kids are around, get them out of the room. All right, so Who Goes There by John W. Campbell. This book novella has actually been adapted into two movies. There was a 1951 movie called The Thing from Another World, but a lot of people say that the 1982 film by John Carpenter is more faithful to the novella. The basic story is about a group of scientists in Antarctica, Antarctica, who discover an alien frozen in ice. But it's not just any alien. This alien uh, absorbs animals and people that it comes in contact with and then can replicate that organism darn near perfectly. So the premise set up by John W. Campbell is a perfect story of suspicion and suspense because once these scientists discover that this alien can replicate uh, their fellow scientists, they start looking at each other very suspiciously. If you've seen the 1982 movie, and I highly encourage that you do for reasons that I'll get to in a minute, but if you've seen it, you know the basic sequence of events. The novella is basically just the scientists discover the alien, it gets loose, it attacks a dog, there's a lot of suspicion among the scientists about who's an alien and who's not, there's some blood tests that are done, and then it kind of just ends fairly quickly. John Carpenter's movie adds a lot more backstory and horror elements, really. The movie bombed, I believe, at the box office when it was released in 1982, but it has since become a cult classic. It has, in my opinion, one of the best movie openings ever. Not just horror movie openings, but one of the best movie opening scenes ever. You start off seeing a helicopter with two men in it flying over the frozen Antarctic tundra, following a beautiful dog. Then they start shooting at it. Who are these men? What is up with this dog? And why are they trying to kill it? You're immediately intrigued. You want to know what the heck is going on. One of the things I love about this story, both the novella and the movie, is its unique setting. I mean, how many books and movies out there take place in Antarctica? The extreme remoteness of the setting adds to the sense of hopelessness facing these men because they are out there alone thousands and thousands of miles away from the nearest person. This movie is most known for its practical effects, but it doesn't get enough praise in my opinion for its cinematography. This movie is beautifully shot. Let's talk about the effects in this movie because holy cow, I, I, I mean what an astonishing achievement, and I'm not just being over the top for the sake of this video. I mean, if you have seen this movie, you probably know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, go into this movie expecting to have your mind blown by the puppetry, the animatronics, and the practical makeup effects they put together in this movie. This movie has one of, if not the most impressive set of practical effects in any movie I've ever seen. But trust me, this movie is not for people 
with weak stomachs. If you can't handle gore, then this movie is probably not for you. And I even hesitate to show some of the clips from this movie in this video because this movie's gross. But I just have to give kudos to the creative team in charge of the effects. I believe they were led by Rob Botton. Bravo, bravo. The effects still hold up mostly to this day. And this movie is so fun to watch Every new scene with a new monster or thing in it exposing itself to the scientists, it's just every single time there's a new one, you're like, that's crazy. Speaking of practical effects, this is something that I am pretty passionate about. If you've seen any other videos on my channel, you know that this is something that I tend to bring up uh, periodically. Uh, if, when it's relevant. It's, if you've seen my review about The Hobbit, you know how much I disliked how much CGI there was in that movie compared to the earlier Lord of the Rings trilogy. Anyway, they made a version of this movie, The Thing, in 2011, and it wasn't really a remake, it was kind of a prequel. They, the, the, the 1982 movie was known for its amazing puppetry and practical effects, and the 2011 movie just redid it with a bunch of CGI basically, had none of the magic of the 1982 movie, and I don't think you need to watch that movie. Uh, it's not a horrible movie, but if you're gonna watch either The Thing, you should watch the 1982 movie because of the effects. So some of the ways that the novella and the movie are different include how they begin. Like I said, the movie starts with this helicopter chasing this dog and this guy trying to kill it. However, the novella starts with the group finding this thing in the ice, bringing it back to their camp and talking about it, which is actually a lot similar, more similar to how the 2011 movie starts. In the book, the character of McCready, who is Kurt Russell's character in the movie, in the book he is a meteorologist, not the helicopter pilot. They also have much different endings. If you don't want to know how they end, go read it and watch it and come back and, and watch this video. But the novella ends with men discovering that Blair, who is infected, they had quarantined him off, which happens in the movie as well, but they discover that he had been building an anti-gravity device with nuclear power and he, was, he formed it into a spaceship or something that he was gonna use to traverse large distances of land to, you know, get to wherever, which they actually do discover a spaceship that Blair was working on in the movie. That takes place a lot earlier though, like at the end of the second act or something. So that is depicted in the movie, but that's how, that's like the end of the novella is them discovering that transportation device that the thing was working on. The movie ends a lot differently. I'm not even going to spoil that for you because if you haven't seen the movie, go watch the movie. It's got a good ending in my opinion. Some people don't like it, but I like it. All right, those are my thoughts on The Thing and Who Goes There, the novella that inspired The Thing. It's good. I enjoyed reading it. But in my opinion, the movie by John Carpenter is a masterpiece. Does the movie go a little over the top with the blood and gore? Probably, but that's what makes it the thing.